Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Well, good morning, everyone. I am doing my update video today on the Rolls Royce. I've decided uh, to actually ride my motorcycle today, which is my 89 Honda GB500, a fantastic little bike. We are gonna go inside, check on the car. I know my upholster has been doing some work. Uh, there's been some updates. I haven't seen it in a while myself. So let's go uh, see what's going on. Still feel sorry for this old XJS sitting out here. I don't know. I don't know why I like abandoned looking cars so much. I feel like bringing them home and polishing them up. I've always been that way. Maybe another day. Partly the delay in getting the car done is that we're waiting for the engine in this E-Type to get installed and rebuilt. I think they're just about through it because this is their heavy duty hoist and they need, need one fairly heavy for my car. But I do notice something different already. My upholster has been here and she's just about got the top on. Look at that, I just about have a roof back on my car. Rear window is in, just about got it stretched out, looking pretty decent. She's not here right now, so I can't ask her about it, but this will be so nice to actually seal it up. It hasn't had a, a roof on it probably in 15 years or so. We're gonna see if it works. Look at that. <laughs> it's aggressive. It's a, yeah, it's an aggressive, or you don't want to put your hand up there when it's going up or down. Was it difficult to get the uh, to get it working? Uh, yeah, there was a wiring issue because of the age of the vehicle, all the corrosion inside the wires. So we replaced part of the loom. We bled the system, replaced the hydraulic fluid. And, like, it's alive. Yeah, it is alive. We almost have a car. How's the uh, E-Type going along? Because I think that, that car has to get finished before yeah, mine can go on. We are putting together the transmission. It will be checked like during next week. If the transmission goes well, we'll be able to put this beast on the hoist. Perfect. Well, it'll be good timing. It's too heavy to put it on any other the hoist except for the hoist one. So we hope we are scared to be under it. It's too heavy. Oh, no. For. I, uh, I agree. It's a, it's a heavy car. Oh, I can see the few things left to do. There's piping that goes right along this channel here. These portions on the side will get stapled in place. And I imagine she's got to do a little bit of uh, creative pulling to kind of get that angle just right there to cover the other staples. And it, it's a it, curious system that they have. They use wood. You know, a lot of cars there that, you know, there's a metal piece that bolt on English. Well, it's wood, it's, it's old school. So then that will go on something like that. And then I think it's just the matter of the front bows. I took some of the wood that was underneath here and refinished it. I'll put that back on later on. And she took the, uh, the back seat out to go and do some adjustments on that. So my back seat's out. But all in all, we are at least seeing some progress on the car. Yeah, like, it's like everyone that comes in and sees the car, like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> People like it when they come through? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it is a good looking car. It has a real life, like, you can, you can compare it to anything. It's a solid body, no fenders, no wheels, no stitches, no nothing. And it has gorgeous lines comparing like to the regular four door silver shadow, silver spool, whatever. It has way better lines. And yeah. That's, like, that's the reason why they keep the value. Yeah, it's Molliner Park Ward and they did this beautiful little sort of indentation here that brings out the fender a little bit and the swoop that comes down. It is a beautiful car. It will be so much fun to drive this. And again, I'm hoping this summer to have the kids come for a ride outside, but you know, you gotta be patient and wait for things to happen. These things don't happen overnight. And plus, 
the shop really couldn't do too much right now anyway because we're waiting for the top to get finished up. So timing should end up being perfect. Top will get finished up this week and then, uh, next week we get it on the hoist and find out exactly what it needs. The shop always has kind of cool cars coming through. This is a 76 Jag XJ. And the, it looks like somebody put, what, a 350 Chevy small block in there. Okay. Freight engine performance transmission. Well, you know, people think that the Jag engines are kind of unreliable, but they're actually not that bad, especially like a 4.2 liter or... It was a straight six. It's not that huge powertrain. Right. Like, it's pretty lazy. It's nice to cruise around, but if you want some performance, the like for us our perspective it's a kind of contract with the satan right because we don't believe that jaguar must be with the u.s engine with the older respect to the muscle cars and everything you lose the weight proportion you lose everything so we prefer but a lot of, to be with the jag engine a lot of people do this though don't they because uh, it's a simple push road engine zero technology pretty bulletproof you can find find parts on the shelves of Napa and Canadian tires, so... Yeah, it makes it much easier. People like the lines of the car, they like the interior, but they don't want to worry about the hassle of the engine. If you want, we can make a comparison for it. Okay, so that's your, uh, that's your Chevrolet engine mounted inside of a Jaguar. And then you've got the original, or... Uh... Turn the engine there, the original and well. Okay, now before we get back there, I gotta ask, this is a TVR under here, isn't it? Yeah, it had, uh, it's a vehicle that's been here for a while. It has performance engine and everything in it, but it's, like it's cost, abandoned. It's a, uh, like, it's abandoned. Who abandons a TVR? Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> it had tiny minor damage here on the fender. Oh, I see. So it needs everything for salvage inspection and it's pretty pricey and costly. So we are waiting for proper timing to get it. What Good. year of TVR is it? Uh, 80... 87, 87, yeah. It's a rare car. You can't tell from looking underneath there, but... No, it's good until it's a shelf for parts. Now, this is yours, and you picked this up for how much? I picked this vehicle for 500 bucks. 500 dollars for an only, only because the price of the parts and price of labor on everything, so... Well, that's why when it's handy to be a mechanic, you can get a car like this and fix it up. Now you can compare... A My goodness. Of, that usual spark plug change that takes on the V8 engine maybe an hour. On this vehicle, it takes three to four hours to do these spark plugs. Well, no kidding. There's not a square inch. You couldn't even drop a grapefruit in there and have it fall you down. Can drop a grapefruit. Oh, barely. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's, it's, it's not a home. Uh, like most of the muscle cars, they are home projects and father son project. This is more hell of the vehicle and you swear a lot, sweat a lot. Yeah, I bet probably swear and sweat a lot working on that. And you're dreaming to meet that engineer that designed it to kill him. <laughs> but yeah. But you can handle it. Yeah, well, everyone can handle it. Simply, it's not that simple to work on them comparing to V8 engines. So yeah, that's the reason why people put V8s in them. Yeah, and well. This one pulls 265 horsepower from 5.3 V12 comparing to 300, 400 that you can get from a crate engine, so. Yeah, no comparison. No comparison. Well, it looks like you got a pretty good deal. The body on this car looks really nice. Thanks. And thanks for giving us a little tour of the, uh, the cars at the shop too. So back at the house now, um, basically just waiting right now for the top to get finished by our upholster, the back seats to go back in, and a few other little things to happen before the guys can get it on the hoist. So I'm really hoping that, you know, maybe this time next week, we should have the car up on the hoist and then they can order the parts in for the brakes. We'll get that done. And uh, would really love to be driving this car, you know, July, August of this year. Fingers crossed on that, though we don't really know exactly what else it's gonna need. I don't know what kind of shape the um, tie rods are in or the rest of the suspension. So it's gonna need it going over to make sure it's good and safe before I put myself or my family in it. But the car has certainly come a really long way since we first bought it as a raccoon eaten, disgusting Rolls Royce. And I'll tell you, I regretted buying it the minute it showed up and I bought it sight unseen and when it got taken off that trailer and I could smell it like half a block away, I thought, what have I done? But now it's very close to being a finished car. And honestly, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel 
Oh no, that means I'm dying. Well, maybe I am gonna die after I get the bill for this, but uh, I can see the end of the rainbow. Now that's also a pot of gold, that's expensive too. Either way, I think I'm gonna be, uh, you know, out a lot of money after this thing is on the road, but I will have a really nice Rolls Royce and I would never have thought a couple years ago that I'd have a car like this. And the only way I could do it would be by buying one that had been eaten by raccoons and rats. So here you go. <laughs> but it is certainly a nice car now and it's coming back to its former glory. So stay tuned for more episodes as we start to close the chapters on this project. With any, um, uh, with any luck, of course, we'll have this car on the road before too long, hopefully in the next few weeks. And it's gonna be a great day. So we'll try and do a recap video when that point comes and show you the progress from start to finish and where we're at. So thanks for watching guys. That uh, was just a short update today. I appreciate you checking out our channel and stay tuned for more episodes. Bye for now.